Let's take a look at what happens to the air in front of an airfoil as it gets to higher and higher speeds as it approaches and then reaches the speed of sound on Mach 1. So when an airfoil is moving through the air, it's pushing the air in front of it out of the way and it creates these disturbances or waves in the air in front of it, just like a boat moving through the water, like the, the bow waves from a boat, think of it like that. And these waves move at the speed of sound. They're just, these are just pressure waves in the air. Um, and that's what sound waves are. Uh, and they move at the, the speed of sound, right? Which is Mach 1. So at lower Mach numbers here at Mach 0.5, so about half the speed of sound, uh, the waves move out of the way of the airfoil as it uh, moves through the air. And as we get to higher and higher speeds, Mach 0.8 here, um, they're still being pushed out of the way in front of the aircraft, but the uh, aircraft is almost like catching up to them, right? Because these waves move at the speed of sound. So the closer and closer the aircraft's speed gets to the speed of sound, the more it catches up to these waves in front of it. And that's what happens when the aircraft reaches the speed of sound, Mach 1. It's caught up to these waves that are all now bunched up in front of it like this, creating this large shock wave in front of the aircraft, which is responsible for creating the sonic boom you hear when an airplane flies at uh, or above the speed of sound. However, we also need to talk about what happens to the air flowing over the wing as the aircraft gets towards the speed of sound. We know that because of the curved shape of a, of a wing, uh, it accelerates the airflow over the top of it, and with Bernoulli's principle, that creates an area of low pressure. That's how the wing is producing lift in part. Um, but that means that the air flowing over the top of the wing uh, moves at a faster speed than the aircraft itself through the air. So as you get closer and closer to the speed of sound, the airflow over the top of the wing can actually reach the speed of sound before the aircraft itself does. So what can happen is at speeds getting towards Mach 1 but still below Mach 1, the accelerating airflow over the top reaches the speed of sound and we get this shock wave here. While it hasn't yet formed completely in front of the aircraft, we get one forming on top of the wing. Uh, and that's where most of the issues related to flights approaching the speed of sound start to come from, is that shock wave there. It does things like uh, create turbulent airflow behind it, which spoils the lift being produced by this part of the wing. Uh, it also affects the center of pressure. Now that the whole wing isn't producing lift anymore, but just part of it, uh, the center of pressure shifts. And then this turbulent airflow can create problems as well, because what's back here, we've got the horizontal stabilizer. And this turbulent airflow over the horizontal stabilizer can make it less effective which means it produces less downforce, which results in a nose down pitching moment, which is known as mock tuck. Uh, so you can also experience buffeting as this turbulent air runs into the horizontal stabilizer. Um, so you get buffeting, you get a, a loss of lift. So it almost kind of looks like a, a stall that we think of uh, when we exceed the critical angle of attack, except this is occurring at really high speed. So you can sometimes think of it as almost like a high speed stall. Uh, other things that can happen are loss of aileron effectiveness, right? We have no longer have smooth airflow over the ailerons here. You can get them buzzing, um, vibrating back and forth. Um, and then the effect that the, the loss of lift here has on a swept wing aircraft is interesting. Let's take a look at that. So if I have a swept wing like that, uh, a swept wing on a, a like a transport category aircraft, jet aircraft, usually is thicker and more cambered at the wing root here. Okay, so that creates a greater acceleration of air over the wing, and it means that the air flowing over this part of the wing uh, reaches Mach 1 sooner than the air flowing over the thinner, less cambered parts of the wing. So the area that starts experiencing this shock wave and Turbulent airflow is more at the root, okay? And the, the part of the wing that is still producing lift 
is this part that is swept back here. So if the center of pressure, the center of lift from the wing was uh, was here, somewhere around here before, now this part of the wing isn't producing lift anymore, the center of pressure is going to move outward. It's also going to move aft because, again, the part of the wing that is still producing lift is more aft. And I haven't drawn a super swept wing here, uh, but it would be more dramatic with a, a larger sweep. So now maybe center of pressure is here as opposed to being here before. So it's moved out and aft, right? And that movement aft also contributes to mock tuck. So aircraft that can fly at these speeds have a couple speed limits associated with them. We've got MMO and VMO. Uh, these are just made up numbers here for a, a sample airplane, um, but they're typical. So MMO is a limiting Mach number. And the purpose of that is to uh, keep the aircraft from getting the shock wave forming on the wing and experiencing the negative effects that are associated with that. And then we have VMO, which is mainly to prevent flutter of the control surfaces. VMO is in not syndicated airspeed. MMO is a Mach number. Um, so VMO, if you stay below this number, you avoid flutter. Uh, at higher speeds, the control surfaces, ailerons or other, other control surfaces can flap like a flag flapping in the wind. Uh, back and forth very quickly and that can damage or destroy them. Um, so we have these limits.